introduction. I'm happy to be a part of this session. It's always a pleasure to be part of the sessions of NCRT. And uh, being a teacher myself, I like to uh, actually reach out to the other to other teachers also. I understand their strengths and I also understand their uh, uh, constraints. So, friends, uh, welcome to this session. Now, this is the first session in the uh, of the uh, of the afternoon. So, uh, I'm sure that certain uh, uh, laziness, uh, uh, you know, you might be feeling, or you might be busy with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, working out your action plan or something. Uh, but I I suggest that you leave all of that for the time being, uh, because uh, this session is actually a very important session. It's for it's for your safety and the safety of your family, of your friends, and definitely safety of your students. Uh, and uh, you are responsible for their well-being in any case. And uh, uh, as I go through the session, uh, I, I love to have interactive uh, uh, sessions, but uh, this is an online session. So I would like to also make it as interactive as possible. Uh, also want to understand uh, uh, your thoughts, your attitudes. So uh, I will throw in a few questions, uh, which will probably have some number or yes or no. So you just have to type that. And uh, also keep your mobiles uh, next to you uh, because uh, I will be taking you through the security settings of uh, WhatsApp and uh, Google and uh, you can practice WhatsApp. But uh, uh, keeping phone next to you doesn't mean that, uh, uh, you know, you should use your phone in the session because as a teacher, you will well, well understand that uh, the motivation for a speaker, the motivation for an educator is only when the uh, learners are attentive and uh, listening and asking a lot of questions. Uh, I will give you time to ask questions at the end. You can also start putting up your questions uh, uh, on chat in between. So we will address those. And uh, friends, a last request, uh, please keep your uh, uh, <clears throat> videos on. So that is my request. I'll give you all uh, uh, 30 seconds uh, uh, because, you know, I would like to see whom I'm talking to and not only the uh, names. Okay, uh, so uh, I since uh, uh, I, I was informed by NCRT that I should mainly conduct my session in English. Uh, however, if uh, 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 you want me to be bilingual, uh, please put it in the chat uh, because whichever way I want to reach out uh, to all of you and I want to make this session uh, very, very interesting for you all. And uh, I'm waiting for, uh, you know, th there are over 100 people in the session and the video is on just for about 20, 25 of them. So I'm waiting, I'm looking at the gallery and waiting for the videos of the rest also to be on. So kindly uh, do that. So English and Hindi, fine. English and Hindi, dono mein baat karungi. Or Rappar, dekhe, aap meri request to maani nahi rahe hai. Main kehni apna video on kar dije to aap loog to video on nahi kar rahe hai. So uh, that is my sincere request to you. Yes, now I can uh, see uh, a lot of videos uh, coming on. Uh, so at least three, uh, one fourth of the participants have switched on their video. Uh, so, uh, excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, uh, since most of the states are South Indian states, so we would like to keep it only in English because only one participant has responded uh, Hindi and English. Okay. The majority of them will not understand then. So we will keep it in English only. Okay, I'm absolutely uh, uh, fine with uh, any uh, with either Hindi or English. So I'll keep it mostly in English, yes. and uh, uh, we will address the uh, uh, you know needs of that uh, one participant also. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes maybe in the end when something is yes, uh, not understood. Okay, uh, so without any further ado, uh, friends, I start sharing my screen and I start the session. So I want to share a little bit, uh, uh, though ma'am has given uh, the um, introduction. I'm an educationist for past uh, uh, 25 years. And it gives me great, great pleasure to be associated with uh, educationists like you. Now in, uh, uh, you know, wherever you are, whatever you are teaching. And this topic is uh, actually relevant to uh, every everybody. So uh, let me start. 
तो द टॉपिक इज सेफ्टी एंड वेलनेस इन साइबर स्पेस नाउ यू मे आस्क वॉट इज अ नीड ऑफ सच अ सेशन एंड बट मोस्ट ऑफ यू विल अंडरस्टैंड दैट विद द साइबर इशूज कमिंग अप फाइनेंशियल फ्रॉड रेप्यूटेशन इशूज हैरसमेंट बुलिंग एंड सो मेनी अदर थिंग्स एंड दिस हैज बिकम वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू लीड अ हैप्पी लाइफ इन एंड 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 अ सेफ टाइम एंड हैव अ सेफ टाइम इन साइबर स्पेस because uh, you would be surprised to know uh, that uh, uh, mostly adults in india uh, do spend 5 to 6 hours uh, uh, on internet now they may be uh, studying they may be learning they may be uh, doing uh, whatever work or they may be on social media they may be watching youtube videos but that is the average time and if uh, uh, and youth even even more and if we are in a space uh, uh, for 5 to 6 hours hours in a day out of our waking uh, uh, 12 to 14 hours uh, then we have to be happy uh, in that space so uh, uh, proceeding with my session uh, i'm sure you will agree that we live in an interconnected world now what do i mean by interconnected world that we are connected together in many ways uh, through internet which we were not earlier okay if i have a friend in uh, europe in america then i can i can do a video call with that friend i can talk to that friend i can uh, uh, talk to my grandchildren okay i want to uh, connect with my bank somewhere in the country i can do that okay so there are uh, so this is the uh, interconnected world where we are connected with everybody and we have friends across the world uh, you know on an av uh, average uh, uh, adult has about 3 uh, uh, to uh, 400 uh, friends on social media and out of those uh, uh, there are about 40% whom probably you would have never met you have met online now there they may be professors in some universities from whom you are taking uh, support for in, for enhancing your learning or there may be some personalities uh, uh, with whom you have connected so now people say uh, he is my uh, facebook friend she is my twitter friend you know that's how they describe that even if they have not met they are friendly with each other so we are living in an interconnected world and see the world is connected through the wires do you agree with it or not i'm sure most of you will agree with it and uh, and the world is at our fingertips okay uh, we used to in hindi they say ki duniya hamari mutthi mein hai so now the world is at our fingertips we can roam around the world uh you know by scrolling or uh, uh, through mouse or uh, uh, you know uh, using a fingertips okay uh, at a click of the mouse we can go to supermarket can't we now most of you would be doing some kind of shopping online okay uh, it may be through blinkit it may be through porter it may be through amazon or flipkart or whatever and uh, uh, we do a lot of we don't need to go to supermarket the supermarket is sitting in our house we just have to access it through internet and uh, do the shopping okay and uh, uh, travel now as far as travel is concerned uh, at the click of the mouse uh, we can actually book our tickets and plan our travel plan our stay and plan our itinerary to any part of the uh, world and then we can also uh, you know sit at home and experience the rainforest of amazon we can experience the statue of liberty the 3d effect and we cannot take students to that uh, any other volcano but then at the click of the mouse through internet we can see those pictures uh, which which uh, which are so realistic so uh, we can travel across the world and then banking i'm sure a lot of you must be doing mobile or internet banking we don't need to go to the bank as often as we used to go earlier okay fine we take out the money we go to atm and take out the money but if there are some transactions if there are bill payments uh, we do it mostly uh, at home these days socializing like i said that uh, an average adult has about 4 to 500 friends uh, uh, on social media on one platform so there may be commonality between different platforms or maybe like you know twitter you have some new friends and facebook you have some other friends also so there there are so we can socialize with anybody we don't need to uh, go to anybody's house or uh, you know to socialize we can do it online we can exchange ideas we can exchange photos we can exchange our views etc and uh, entertainment 
now youtube is a best friend uh, we can download the uh, videos we play those videos and we can download movies we can listen to podcasts we can listen to songs and entertainment happens at home a lot of us we don't have to go to uh, cinema halls anymore we have the prime videos and netflix uh, at our disposal and we the you know the latest movies and shows are over there <laughs> so and the last but not the least is the knowledge is the education is the learning uh, so uh, uh, one good example is that uh, uh, i'm connected with you and i'm sharing some important information which is enhancing your knowledge is also is through internet you've been having this fantastic uh, uh, five uh, five day workshop and in five day workshop you have your uh, the i i i saw the uh, sessions and they were so enriching you would have learned so much sitting at home and also during covid covid time all of you rose to the occasion and you donned the hats of uh, digital teacher you a pedagogist donned the hat of digital teachers uh, so that uh, the learning does not stop during covid and all that happened how did it happen it happened through the internet so internet has uh, definitely made a life uh, sim simpler and internet has brought tremendous social possibilities educational uh, educational opportunities and also responsibilities so we can we we have seen what all we can do with the internet okay and so many opportunities uh, are at our at our disposal but on internet we have to be much more responsible than in our real lives uh, like they say uh, the spider man the motto of spider man is the with great power comes great responsibility so friends internet has given us great power and we need to use that power of internet very very responsibly not only us but we we have to uh, share these uh, uh, you know responsibilities these ideas these values with our learners also but then here we we need to think are we ready to seize these opportunities and face challenges in this new world i want you to think about it give it uh, 30 seconds that we as digital uh, uh, migrants a lot of us are digital migrants uh, digital migrants are those who who were not living in the internet uh, ready world who who for whom the internet came very much later in their lives while our children are digital natives because they were born in the internet connected world so migrants always have a tough time so as migrants as old school thoughts as pedagogists we have to think are we ready to use this opportunities to our advantage or not i want you to write yes or no in the chat box uh, whether you think we are ready or you think we are not ready y for yes and n for no so i'll be waiting for your comments in the chat box so are we ready for these how many of you think we are ready okay i'm getting good responses so uh what okay a lot of you have said yes 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 uh, uh, we are ready uh if we are ready i know we are partially ready but if we are 100% ready then why are we getting into the frauds especially the senior citizens especially the elderly why are we getting into so many frauds okay we 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 are not able to handle uh, you know our safety on the internet it happens many a times so friends uh, we need to now think differently uh, this internet world is a very is a world wide web where we meet all kinds of people in a real life we, we meet very limited people so when we meet all kind of people there are good there are bad there are all kind of people there are people who are there to help us there are people who are ready to take uh, uh, you know opportunity or advantage of us so this is a very important thing for you to uh, think that are we ready or not and uh, think deeply about it so just sharing about internet like i said internet is a world wide web so just sharing about it uh, every one minute of the day a uh, google there are 5.7 million searches on google in one minute the next one tiktok 
there are 167 million videos posted on TikTok in one minute. This is this is across the globe. And Twitter has 575,000 posts. Instagram has 65,000 photos uploaded in a minute. And Facebook has 240,000 photos. And Facebook uh, uh, likes and views are 44 million in one minute. And YouTube has 694,000 hours of videos posted every minute. So there are so uh, others also. I just took these because I thought you are aligned to them. And now they say data never sleeps. There are you know uh, uh, billions of people online at, at any time. And then now they say that if we look at the internet world, it will become one of the largest country if we look or look at the netizens. And India, in any case, is uh, one of the largest users of internet. So these figures are just to tell you that how much of data we consume, how much of data we upload. And, and this data is very, very important. Now, uh, okay, now I'll come back to data. Now, what is data? Data can be your pictures. Data can be uh, what you like. Data can be your uh, um, uh, the uh, emails that you send. Anything that you do online is your data. And why we talk that this data, data is very, very precious. And data is the new oil. So data has replaced oil as the most precious commodity. It has replaced gold as the most precious commodity. Why? Because this data which organizations get from you, this data is used for marketing. This data is misused and shared and uh, sold in the on the dark web. Now, and uh, what happens that these social media platforms give us services for free and we are very happy about it. But then what they are taking back from you is very, very precious. They are taking back from you is your data. In a real life, we don't want to share our information with anybody. If somebody asks for our address, we will look at that person and then we will, unless we first know that person, trust that person, we will not share. We will not even share a name. We will, uh, then, you know, people online, just without thinking, they share their details. They share their data. Okay, so I'll come to that, that uh, how, how much we should share and how much we should not share. But I'm just trying to tell you that you have to remember that your data is very, very precious. It can be used for marketing purposes, for product purposes. It can be misused and it can be sold. I'm sure you would not like it. So here is something more and I want answers for this. Have you or your friends ever received links on the email or text or through calls? Number one. Promising rewa rewards, free gifts, sorry. Promising rewards, free gifts or holidays. Cl like click on this link and you will get uh, uh, a car or you will get a new, uh, Adidas will give a pair of shoes or uh, you click a British uh, Airways is uh, uh, promising you a holiday provided you click on this link. We come across these kind of, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, text emails and calls also. Or you would have received urgent message asking you to pay electricity, phone, or cable bill through the link, else the connection will be discontinued. So this is called of a, this is called as an urgent message. Okay, the message which comes is that your electricity bill is due. Click on this link to learn more, or click on this link to pay up. You know, and else the uh, connection will be discontinued. So what happens? We don't want the electricity or the phone connection to be discontinued. And even if you have paid up, you still want to make sure that there is no, pen, there no pending amount left. Okay, so you click on that link and what happens? That link, is uh, it's, it's a malware. And, and the, through that link, malware or malicious software can get embedded or installed into the system. So that's a fake link. That's not a link of that state power uh, department. It goes to a hacker. The hacker gets then uh, he uh, the hacker gets opportunity to put malicious software in on your phone, and then once that malicious software is on your phone, that malicious software mirrors all the data. 
And then whatever you do is actually reflected on that hacker's uh, uh, phone. Uh, there are also messages, complete KYC, else the account will be closed. Now, banks always tell us, we will not give you call or send you message or send you email uh, regarding even the UPIs. They say that uh, uh, we, we will never send you messages like this. You have to go to their official website to do the KYC or personally go over there. Uh, but still, a lot of people fall prey to this. Or, uh, uh, you know, some people receive service message that you can click OK on this, else your phone will shut down. Or oh, nobody wants the phone to shut down. Phone is an essential part of a life. So they click on that uh, malicious link. The latest message which is making rounds is where two of my friends have, uh, in, in last uh, uh, 10 days, have fallen prey to it. The homeowner, there is a kind of a message which says that this is a message from the government of India, where the homeowners are being asked to click on the OK button as the government is com coming up with new policies. So if you own a house, you must click on the link and we will share with you the new policies. We get scared. And then we don't realize that there is no government logo, etc. over there. If government is coming up with new policies, they will never send you, uh, you know, SMS like this. The moment you click on the OK button, then your phone gets hacked. So now please put on the chat, uh, how many of you have got received or your friends have received uh, these messages? One message, two messages, uh, two, three, four, five. How many uh, messages have been received so far? I'm sure you have received messages like this. I also keep on receiving them. Many, many, so many. Yes, yes. We keep on receiving so messages. And uh, uh, yes, I, I uh, thank you so much for your responses. Daily 223, you, you're you so right. The daily 223 uh, uh, messages, uh, uh, my colleague recently lost, uh, uh, by, uh, you know, uh, four lakhs by such uh, messages. So you all are aware of urgency of all this. And I'm sure you as smart uh, educators, uh, educators would not receive. But then uh, sometimes what happens that there is a call and the other person is so trusting. I mean, the voice is so nice, so sweet. And then we give in to it. I'll give you another example of that also go, uh, going ahead. So any of you receive any of these messages, please don't attend because uh, if the government has to send message, they will put it on their website, official website, and you can see over there. Or And then nobody will give you shoes or car or holiday free. Okay. And let's say you receive a message that uh, uh, Air India is giving you uh, giving free tickets to all the people who are between this and this age. We get those messages. <clears throat> if you are curious, then don't click on OK. Go to the Air India official website and find out if there is a message over there. Because if they are sending you a message, then that has to be reflected on their website. So please don't fall prey to these kind of free things. Okay. So this is uh, uh, the, the, uh, this message uh, uh, is often uh, uh, sent. Uh, let's say that uh, uh, some uh, uh, person is applying for a uh, graduation program to the university. So uh, he or she gets this message. This email is, uh, dear network user. Okay, first of all, network user should not be there. It should be the name of the person. So this email is to inform you that my university network uh, password will expire in 20, 24 hours. So the university might have given password to that student to access uh, the learning management management system or the or whatever uh, uh, system they have. So it sends you the university logo comes, look alike logo kind of comes. So what happens? That students get gets very perturbed okay disturbed oh my god uh you know i i want to download information from here or i want admission in this and i have to fill up the form so uh then they say that update your password so the this link that person clicks and when that per link you is clicked then the form comes where your name your date of birth of that person and all the personal details email id and username and maybe even the bank details that uh, you know we need your bank details to uh, pay the, uh, for uh, fees etc so all those details are shared 
And then those details do not go to the university. They go to the hackers. So it's very, very important uh, when anybody, now you look at the screen, when anybody receives this kind of an email, it becomes very important to verify it. And how do you verify it? You go to that address bar. And on the address bar, which has the URL, you look for HTTPS. S stands for security and a padlock. And then, uh, uh, you know, look at the address, that the spelling of that university or bank or whatsoever. And sometimes, you know, they change the spelling. Okay, and then we don't realize. Let's say a bank sends you a message that update your KYC. So they have a look alike logo, which looks like that bank. Okay, now the name of the bank instead of HDFC, maybe HFDC. But human beings, we, we generally do not notice that. And we also do not notice the uh, logo, the minor changes in the logo. And then sometimes when we are in a hurry, we don't look for HTTPS or that padlock and we click there. So friends, beware. Be very, very wary of uh, uh, you know clicking on such uh, uh, websites. Okay, and uh, check and recheck like you like you do in your real life. In your online life, you have to check and recheck. You know, if, if you do it twice in your real life, do it five times in your online life. Now, this is something which was uh, <clears throat> um, very, very uh, popular some time back. That Tata Group, Tata Motors is celebrating 150th, 150th anniversary. And if you click on this link, and give options and, uh, uh, you know, and there is a short quiz and, uh, uh, you know, appear for that uh, uh, quiz, answer the questions, you will win a Tata Nexon. And uh, so many people, this became a very big rage. And in that process, they kept on, and in between, they kept on asking the personal details of the, of, uh, uh, the user. So in that process, all the personal details of the users were uh, uh, collected. And obviously, nobody received a car. Nobody received a car. Tata Motors, first of all, this is a fake. This is a fake advertisement. It is not by Tata Motors. We have to, again, uh, you know, check and recheck. So you might think that my, my trusted friend sent me. But your trusted friend is not working in Tata Motors and originated from him or her. That trusted friend would have got from, got from somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. And it's a forward, forward, forward. So please don't fall prey to such things. Like I said, there is nothing, nothing ever free in this world. Okay. Uh, now, the realities uh, uh, of the internet world. So... Like we said, like I said earlier, interconnected world has made our lives very easy and very interesting, but it has also made it unsafe. It has also made it open to misinformation. And we are also vulnerable to financial frauds. Uh, I would like to add here emotional blackmail. Uh, do you agree about it or not? Though the, uh, the our lives have been made simpler, but our lives are now more in other way, more complicated uh, because of these kind of issues. So how many of you feel, yes, uh, the life has become a uh, little unsafe or uncomplicated or, or, or complicated? Or how many of you feel that internet is all good and we can do anything on the internet and nothing will ever happen to us? So write yes or no. Yes for uh, the complicated, uh, yes for unsafe and no for uh, no, there is that. Uh, uh, there are no dangers on the internet. So, can you just write on the chat box? Yes. So, people are writing. Yes, it has made a life uh, easy in one way, but very complicated in another way. It has made a life unsafe. Yes. So, friends, this safety is a lot in our hands. If we follow the safety advisories, etc., which we do in a real life. Now, in a real life. Uh, let's say we are sitting in a railway, st uh, a railway station, okay, railway platform. So do, are we not alert that my purse should be safe and these are my, uh, you know, um, um, my baggage should be next to me. We put our hand on one suitcase, we put a foot on the other one so that then if we want to sleep and we clutch a purse like this, that nobody should take it, okay. It happens in the railway station or when we are going to the bank. 
And if we have to take out, if we have to fill all our bank details, we don't open it out and fill in front of everybody. We will go to one corner and quietly fill uh, the details. Okay. Now, all those safety precautions, if you follow in your, uh, which you follow in your real life, if you follow in your online life, then the online safety is in your hands. We don't allow our children to go out in dark. We don't allow our children to, uh, you know, play in the park if they are young uh, children by themselves. Why do we allow our five-year-old, eight-year-old, nine-year-old to have free access to internet? It is more unsafe than being in the park. At least in park, you can, you know, the, the people who are there can be seen. But in an online environment, anybody posing as a child, anybody posing of the same age, you know, can take advantage, okay? And uh, we don't send our children to the park at night, but internet is dark, internet is deep, internet is scary. We must always escort them. We must be around them. We must apply all the safety precautions for them over there. So if we, if we apply these safety precautions, then internet is a wonderful place to be in. Internet has used huge potential for a growth. Like I said, at the click of the mouse, we can do so many things. But if we don't, then it is unsafe. We are open to misinformation, financial frauds, emotional back blackmail, and unhappiness. So your safety is in your hands, friends. It is not in anybody else's hands. So talking of safety and security. So what kind of safety and security we should uh, 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 look at? So first is data security. So like I said, data is the most precious commodity in this information age. And uh, we should not, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> give our data to anybody. We sometimes think, so what? I have just put my uh, address, I have just put my uh, mobile number, so what? Okay, no, it is, these are very important. A lot of us appear for those online quizzes, you know, like uh, you upload your photo and it will show you after uh, 20 years or which hero heroine uh, do you resemble or there are those sari challenges where you have to fill a form so what they're doing for just one minute uh, you know uh, 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 enjoyment we are giving away all our data so all the data is being collected and it can be used against you okay the other thing is personal security. Like I said, that personal security is important in our real lives. It is also very important in our online lives because we have seen that the people make friends online. Like I said, that sometimes, you know, the 30 percent, 20 percent uh, people are uh, online friends whom one has never met. There are so many cases where, uh, you know, you, you meet somebody online and that person says that uh, let's meet somewhere. And, uh, uh, and then you meet face to face and then, you know, th there are not very good consequences. Or uh, you must be aware of it that, uh, uh, you know, a man and a woman meet online. And then uh, marriage is promised and all that. They, they keep on talking. They win each other's trust and they promise each other, you know, I'm coming from so-and-so place. So uh, uh, from, from some the, this country or that country, I'm getting gifts for you. And the next is that I'm stuck at the airport because the gift that I brought for you needs custom clearance. So can you transfer me this much of money or can you transfer me this? Then the other is that I have lost my wallet and I'm stuck at the airport. So you have to transfer me money to take the second flight or to come to your city and then after the, after the money is transferred uh, you know you never hear from a person again and this happened to one of my friends and uh, uh, she was uh, promised all these things and slowly like you know that person took about uh, four to five lakhs on some pretext or the other and uh, uh, at the end of it, uh, after transferring that money, she never heard about that person ever again. Now, that person may be living in the you know uh, community next door. It may, may be living in some village or some uh, city or some country and pretending to be somebody else. Because you can just uh, put anybody's photo and pretend to be what you are not. And that is called impersonation. 
Then financial security, all of you are very well aware that there are so many financial frauds. So now I have now shared with you what are the dangers on the internet. My next step is that how do you mitigate this risk? How do you address these challenges so that you can have a happy time on the internet? So number one is for personal security, keep the geolocation, sorry, uh, keep the geolocation off. Okay, from your phone or laptop. We normally keep the geolocation, uh, our, our location on because it's very convenient. You don't realize that applications, not one, but many applications are actually tracking your data. They're tracking wherever you go. Now, I'll give you a small example. Uh, I go to visit somebody in the uh, hospital. And you know, this, this I observed a few years back. I went to visit somebody in the hospital. And after half an hour, my geolocation was on. And after half an hour, I started getting uh, messages that for your test, for your this, you know, uh, uh, you go to this lab for, uh, uh, you know, this much discount on your blood test or you or for emergency, you can call us. You know, then I realized that, see, my geolocation was on and that was accessed by various applications. They quickly shared my location. They they actually uh, sold my location details and, and I'm getting all these uh, uh, messages. So why do we want to know? Uh, we want to tell the world that where we are, what time we leave the house, what time we leave, uh, we reach our office, where are our children? And if uh, you and your wife work, then you have kept the address uh, on your social media and then your children come home from school and if they are opening the door by themselves, then it is very, very unsafe because your geolocation says you are in the office and your wife is also in the office or school or wherever. So keep your geolocation off. The geolocation should be on only when you need it, when you're booking a cab or when you're looking for directions. And then again, I know it's a little inconvenient, but it is uh, it, it is not supposed to be off. Then control app permissions. Now, everybody wants to uh, download, uh, you know, you go to a bank, they say download our app. You go to a service provider, download our app. Everybody says download our app. Okay, and we happily download app. We download app for how much we have bought. We download app for how many glasses of water we have had. And because we feel that downloading app is very, very convenient, but we don't realize, number one, the more apps we have on the phone, we are cluttering the memory. We are making the phone slow. The battery will uh, uh, finish fast. But most important is when we are downloading those apps, we don't see what all data the app is taking. Okay, let's say uh, a, a telephone service provider says that uh, you download our app and it will be very easy to pay the bill. So you download the app and then when you download the app, it asks you that uh, uh, XYZ service provider should have access to your contact, should have access to your gallery, should have access to this. Now, why does a telephone service provider or a cable provider or anybody uh, have, uh, you know, need access to your gallery or access to your uh, contacts? So you can say no, 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 but then we don't realize that we are keeping ourselves so open in front of everybody. And then uh, those people, all these app, uh, these uh, uh, organizations, if they're not trusted, they will have control over your uh, uh, photos. They will have control over your chat messages, over the uh, people, over your contacts. You will never do a thing like this in your uh, real world. So here, when you're downloading apps, look at that, that which app needs your gallery, which app needs your geolocation. And Uber will need your geolocation and Ola will need your geolocation, but not your gallery, not your contacts. So next time when you give permissions, think and rethink. The other is, I, I think you've been told many, many times that use strong passwords. Passwords are like the key to your safe. They are key to your house. If we if we put a small lock, a small padlock and uh, lock up our flat or lock up our house and uh, say that we are safe, you know, uh, we are not, you know, don't we put those big locks on our front doors when we go out? We also put double lock. We also have grill doors. Why do we have all those? Because we don't want people to break in the lock and enter a house. Similarly, the passwords are the key to your accounts, to your identity. So use strong passwords. 
okay, set up two-factor authentication. I think most of us are doing that. Absolutely, we are doing that. And uh, two-factor two authentication is when you have your password, but if somebody tries tries to access your account, you will also be, or, or you want to uh, you open a banking site or something, they will send an OTP to your number, to your telephone, to your mobile number, and you have to enter the OTP. All the banks and financial organizations, everybody, even the uh, social media uh, platforms, uh, they have the two-factor authentication, but a lot of us don't realize it. So today I'll tell you how to set up the two-factor authentication also for those who haven't done so far. The next is avoid public Wi-Fi. We all feel that, okay, um, uh, I'm sitting at the airport or I'm sitting at the railway station and uh, there is this uh, Wi-Fi. Okay, let me use that Wi-Fi and while I'm sitting, let me do my financial transactions. It will save time. But friends, that is the dangerous thing you are doing. It is like sitting at the railway station and opening up your all your uh, financial documents and then putting uh, details over there. It is just like that because this public Wi-Fi, their security system is very, very feeble, is very, very weak. And in this, uh, a lot of those hackers are waiting for the victims who are uh, who are unaware of the security uh, issues. And the moment uh, they, uh, uh, you know, use that Wi-Fi, they hack into their uh, phones or systems or whatever. Uh, the next is uh, avoid juice jacking. Juice jacking is very, very interesting. Now, uh, my uh, uh, again, I'm at a public place. Okay, I'm at the airport waiting for my flight or uh, wherever I am. Uh, and then the phone is running out of battery. So you see, okay, there are those USB, uh, you know, uh, points where you can charge your phone never charge your phone at the USB point because a USB, as you know, uh, is an input device as well as an output device. Okay, so through that USB, definitely your phone is getting charged, but it can also serve as an output device where the data of your phone can be stored on that USB. And, it, and, and these are absolutely true and verified uh, issues. We are not making them up. Then another is, which I have already stated, don't participate in online challenges. Uh, you know, thrill for two minutes, okay, which heroine uh, uh, do I resemble or how will I look like when I'm 80 years old or, uh, you know, th those kind of things. And then uh, if I upload uh, my photo, what does it say about me? You know, the, you're uploading your photo. Your photo is very personal and photos can be morphed. I'll tell you about the, uh, you know, um, uh, deep fake uh, uh, images uh, uh, being altered due to, uh, uh, with the help of AI. So just for, you know, two minute thrill, don't give your data. Okay. Now recheck the privacy settings. I will uh, talk about it. And one is lost and found USB. Let's say we are walking in the park, we are walking in the corridors of some place, and there is a USB. Oh my God, I that's a USB file. Oh, I my, my USB was not working. I think I will use this USB. And I've got a free USB. No, that USB, the moment you put it on in your system, it will, it will have a malicious software which will transfer to your system and then all your data can be hacked. So these were the few uh, 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 safety and security measures. I'll tell you more about it. Now, like I said that uh, personal, uh, let's go to personal security. So privacy is the most important thing. So privacy again of data, activities, actions, emotions. Now these are a lot of platform these are these are just a few because there was no space so we use a lot of platforms like uh, twitter which is x now or youtube or instagram or facebook or google or you know uber or ola and all these kind of uh, 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 applications okay so when we log on when we download them like i said before they have there you have to fill up a form and in the form, there are lots and lots and lots of fields because everybody wants your data. But you must realize that the fields which have asterisk on them are the ones which are must. The fields which don't have asterisk on them, those that is optional data. And asterisk means, and it is written that asterisk means that this data is must. So a lot of these platforms take away your data. They also look at your activities and actions 
and they also look at the kind of emotions and a profile of you is uh, drawn up. Now, let me tell you, now these organizations and many, many more like these, they are not very old organizations. They got set up maybe 15, 20 years back and now they are the tech giants. Okay, with the maximum revenues in the world. Why they have become so rich? It is because of our data. They are providing free services, but they are taking our data. Now, these organizations, uh, you know, they normally will not misuse your data, but, uh, you know, data leak can happen from their platforms. Like Facebook, Cambridge Analytica, data leak happened there, and then you cannot do anything about it. So, here is something which you have to do that this is one example I'm giving you that uh, uh, we all use maps. Okay, so this is my screen that I have shared with you. In the maps, I have not set my home. Otherwise, you know, they, they will tell you uh, click on home and this arrow, you <clears throat> set your home details. I don't want that application to uh, know where I stay. And work, I don't want that application to know where I work. It is not safe because anybody can hack my uh, uh, phone and go to maps and take the data. And my location history, I have switched off my location history. Uh, friends, there was a time about uh, four years back, I had not switched on my location history. And then I was shocked. One day I was just wanting to see that... Uh, I clicked on the location history key. What is there in location history? You will not believe wherever I went in past uh, two, three years, ever since the map came in, my locations were mentioned. It was very, very scary. Though somebody who wants to take advantage will know where all I went and map it and use it to their disadvantage and my, uh, my advantage. Similarly, activities, you know, <laughs> what activities do you do? What do you like? What you don't like? Why do we want the world to know? Why do we want the world to know about our actions and about our emotions? We can be bullied and we can be blackmailed. So let nobody invade your privacy. Your privacy is in your hands and let nobody invade your privacy once you apply the privacy settings. So which is the next one. So uh, friends, please uh, uh, open the WhatsApp. Please pick up your phone and uh, open the WhatsApp. Okay. And once you've opened the WhatsApp, so uh, you go to settings, see my cursor settings, and then you will come to privacy. I have highlighted it with red. Okay. So I'm, give, I'm going a little slow so that everybody can follow me. So this is privacy. Once you click on privacy, there will be another window that is open. So privacy checkup, control your privacy and choose the right settings for you. See, platform and, you know, uh, application is giving you the right to choose. Only thing we have to be aware. So you click on the start checkup, which is in the red box. Okay. So you can either click, click on start, check, check, uh, uh, start checkup and go to the next box where my cursor is. Or you can, uh, you know, look at uh, before the start che uh, uh, checkup box only, last seen online. Why do you want people to know when you were online? How, you know, you were online two minutes back, two hours back. You know? So uh, there's no point in sharing these details with everybody. The profile photo. Do you want to share your profile photo with everybody? The, anybody who has access to so profile should do photo should be either you know uh, everyone should be it should not be everyone it can be no one or my contacts then about me because on whatsapp you write about uh, uh, yourself so you want to share with your contacts you want to share with nobody you want to share with everybody it is in your hands and this is very important the groups part if you see what happens is that uh, uh, a lot of people include us in the groups and then uh, you may say, what is wrong with that? But if there are some, you know, not so good people who are uh, uh, putting up these groups, which are uh, for racial or anti-national or any other, uh, uh, you know, wrongdoings, and they include you in the group, 
And if that group is doing all the nefarious things, you ought, because you are included in the group, which you probably did not know, you become a part to those wrong beliefs. So let nobody include you in the groups. Uh, uh, so what I have said, I have got 1059 contacts. So I don't want even my contacts to include me in the group. Then you will ask, how do I get included in the group? When they include you in the group, they the link comes to you. And when the link comes to you, then it's up to you. You want to be part of the group. You don't want to be part of the group. So you click on the link to be part of the group. You ignore the link not to be part of the group. So again, the privacy is in your hands. And my status, my status, people post a lot of statuses. So um, uh, should be my contacts, everybody, nobody, whatever you want. So now let's go to, let's click on start checkup and let's go to the third box. Once you click on start checkup, you come to the third box. So this is, uh, the uh, WhatsApp is saying your privacy matters. You know, they are reminding you, control your privacy settings and set up WhatsApp just the way you want it. Okay, so choose who can contact you. If there are some people you don't want to be contacted, you can easily block them. These days, <laughs> we get so many uh, spam calls. I get about seven to eight in a day. And I'm sure you must be getting. And those are calls which will want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, take your data, which will want to promise your uh, false rewards. Or uh, while on call, uh, they may share, uh, you know, it, it may be an obscene call, or it may be asking for your financial details. So what I do is that when I, I don't take calls from a number, Okay, and uh, uh, especially the number which, let, let's say, I'm sitting in uh, Delhi. Now, let's say somebody in uh, uh, Chhattisgarh or somebody in Orissa, where I have no friends, no family, they are calling me. Why should they be calling me? So, I don't take those numbers. So, you can block those numbers. Okay, the next is control your personal uh, information. So, this is actually... a. a a, a very, very important thing, controlling your personal information. So have you been there? Control your personal information. So profile photo, last scene, read receipts, who can uh, view? Do you want the world to know when you were online? No. I think you should keep your privacy to yourself. Then the other is the uh, add more privacy to your chats. Click on that. Click on that, add more privacy to your uh, uh, to your chats. So it is, uh, uh, the last one is end-to-end -end encrypted backup. So you must use end-to-end -end encrypted backward so that if somebody accesses your chats, also they will not be able to decipher because they are encrypted from one end and decrypted at the other end. So friends, you can take the photograph of this uh, screen and uh, you can apply these settings after the, uh, after the uh, session and that will be your home. Okay, now let's go to the next one. I have to go a little fast because I don't have so much of time. And, uh, but at least you take, I, I'm, I'm just, this is a WhatsApp screen. I'm waiting here for uh, uh, 30 seconds so that the photograph can be taken. And you all can apply those settings uh, later. Okay, I'm moving on. Now, friends, please come out of WhatsApp. Otherwise, you will miss the next uh, slide, which is uh, equally important. Now, this is Facebook. Okay, this is Facebook. Okay, so uh, a lot of us use Facebook, and I have taken Facebook as an example. Uh, you can manage settings on your other Insta, or you can manage on Twitter, that is X, you can manage on YouTube on any other application uh, that you, uh, on any other social media platform that you use. So uh, when you are on Facebook, just take a photograph of it. I'm not going to ask you to open Facebook because this will take a long time. So uh, on Facebook, go to settings and privacy. Okay, I have already highlighted those settings and privacy. So when you are on Facebook, this is, see my cursor, it is at the bottom, center bottom. If you go to menu, you get this and you go to settings and privacy. So once you go to setting and privacy, this window appears. And this window is personal and account information. So you can set your information 
of what you want to share, password and security. You can, uh, if you want to uh, change your password, you can do it here. Uh, privacy checkup. This is also like your WhatsApp, a guided review of your important privacy and security settings. Please do that after the session, okay? And uh, audience and visibility is very, very important. Do you want to lock your profile? Now, a lot of us, what we do, we create a social media profile on any of the platform. And then that is open for anybody and everybody to see our details, where I went, what I did, where are my children studying, where am I working, what's my mobile number, what's my address. So all that is there. First of all, Facebook does not, does not need your address. It's an optional. It doesn't need your phone number. It's an option. It just needs your name. Okay. And location. That's it. Okay, but if you have given everything and then you're also writing about your, like I said, safety and privacy actions. Okay, a lot of you are still with your heads down and I think you have a WhatsApp in front of you. Friends, you are losing out on important information. Please put your heads up and then pay attention to me. And that WhatsApp thing, it's a very simple thing you can do on your own if you have taken the uh, uh, that screenshot. Okay. So kindly uh, uh, concentrate here and don't uh, uh, just get stuck with the WhatsApp, please. Okay, now this Facebook, this is very important, profile locking. In the profile locking, you can lock your profile and the people who are your friends, only they will be able to access your profile. Your, they will be able to access your uh, <clears throat> uploads, your news feed, whatever you are doing. Okay, and others will not. So that is a very security, uh, uh, important security measure. Then profile information and how people can find and contact you. Please never put your phone number and uh, uh, home address. Uh, post how you want to segregate, stories how, how you want to put up and all that. Okay, so take a screenshot of this and after the session, please uh, uh, go back and uh, in the evening, uh, take it as your very, very important homework. This homework is very important because the sa your safety and your family's safety depends on this. And not only that, don't keep it with you. Uh, share it with your students as well. Now, the next is on another example, managing settings on your Google account. Please don't open the Google account. Again, take a screenshot of this. I'll explain it to you. You open your... See, the... <clears throat> my name is Nisha, so there is this end. I have not put any profile photo. Why unnecessarily I should put photos everywhere? Okay, so I have deliberately not put any profile photo. So I had clicked on this and then I got this uh, 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 this screen. So you can, you, you can see where my cursor is. Manage your data in privacy. In the privacy and personalization, manage your data and privacy. S apply the same concept as you as I showed in Facebook and WhatsApp. Review security settings. And then it says privacy, further privacy uh, suggestions are available to make your account more safe. So please uh, uh, do that. Uh, data and privacy, security, people and sharing with whom you want to share. All these are very important. So take a screenshot, go to Google. Google gives you the option to make your account safe. Only thing is that because we are unaware or sometimes even when we are, we are aware, we don't bother and uh, uh, we share our information with everybody. Fine. Now let's come to the next one. Uh, besides financial frauds, besides, uh, 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 besides the safety issues, Another thing is very important on the internet. That is personal well-being and security. Personal well-being is very, very important because like I, like I said, we spend so many hours on the internet. And then our safety on internet is very, very important. The time that we spend should be a happy time. And also the time we have spent should not lead us to other issues. So if we keep all our details over there, then somebody and we don't have a strong password, we don't have two-factor authentication, uh, somebody may enter the account and they may assume your identity in a sense that let's say it's a Facebook or an Instagram account or a Google account uh, because your password is weak or because you did not log out the last time, uh, anybody can enter like a thief enters your house. And once that person enters, uh, he or she can change the password and lock you out. 
okay and then starts posting inappropriate things from your account now who's responsible you are because your photo your details everything is over there but you cannot access your account because you've been locked up but then all these inappropriate posts etc are coming in so this is very very common this is called identity theft or impersonation this happens when people are careless about their passwords like in our homes we don't lock our house we can't blame anybody around it we are asked to blame if our house if the thieves come in our house similar it is online the other is reputation management one is that uh, you know once the somebody impersonates as you and posts all wrong things they are attributed to you you are responsible for them so whose reputation is at stake your reputation is at stake and you know reputation is important more important than any money or anything in the world there's another way of reputation management is sometimes our youngsters you all are very responsible people but the youth you know they go by emotions they've had a fight with their teacher they'll post wrong things about the teacher they feel uh, uh, strongly about certain issues you know national international issues they will post over there they don't realize that uh, the digital uh, the uh, digital persona is very closely linked to your real life persona what you post in the digital world is attributed to you i'll give an example and a real example during the covid times this was a news which came that there was this young boy in the state of florida in us who had applied to harvard very intelligent person and he and he got he got provisional uh, admission in harvard but then what happened that the uh, uh, college did a profile check on his social media because that's what everybody does and whether it is for admissions or job or marriage you know social media profiles or you know like somebody comes to me for employment with a fantastic resume i'm impressed but the moment that person goes or while that person is sitting on my laptop i do one thing is check the social media profile the reality comes there okay so uh, the reputation precedes uh, a person and a digital reputation is as important as a real life reputation because we spend so much of time in digital world and they are not uh, separate so whatever you post is attributed to you now this uh, uh, young boy harvard uh, who got admission in harvard his admission was revoked he went to the courts but courts denied they said that the final decision is of the of the uh, institution and imagine you getting admission into harvard and later being denied you can't do anything about it now some people what they do is that they they you know post this obscene or inappropriate things and then they delete it and they feel good about it it is like ostrich into the uh, uh, you know uh, putting his head in the sand okay let's say i have come from school and i'm very angry with my teacher for having punished me and i post all nonsense about my teacher and then after 2 3 hours one of my friend tells me or you know anybody tells me see it's not a good thing what you did all i realize it myself i posted in anger but i should not have done it and i go down and i go to my profile and i take it down but by then this post would have been seen by so many people would have taken screenshots of this and shared oh my god look at uh, uh, x he has written like that for his teacher she is talking like that about her brother her sister or uh, any friend you know and then that becomes viral and that becomes permanent and they can or they always come back to actually trouble you later so all of this can lead to the uh, physical and emotional uh, can do a lot of physical and emotional harm the other thing which can do physical and emotional harm online is harassment bullying trolling we know it happens with anybody so we have to be resilient online one we should not take it and secondly we have to tell our students that uh, don't be a bully and don't be a victim also to the bully report it immediately that's very very important the other thing which is uh, very much in news is uh, very much prevalent is fake news and misinformation what we see online uh, you know it is there today it is not tomorrow okay so that is not permanent it's not like book where you can check and recheck uh, the facts so whatever is published online don't take it at the face value check the facts 
whether it is, like I said, that whether it is giving uh, free gifts or whether it is giving some kind of uh, wrong data or wrong news about a nation or wrong news about some person, you know, always check it because there are mischief mongers uh, uh, around. Okay, then ethical conduct is another thing which actually affects the uh, uh, security, uh, which affects the well-being, that how we conduct ourselves in a real life, the ethics and the values we follow in a real life. If we follow them in our online online life, then we will be uh, you know, happy physically, emotionally, our reputation will not be tarnished. And if we follow all the security measures in our online life as we do in our real life, then the safety is not an issue for us. Addiction is another thing which you need to take care of, especially for the younger ones. So let me dwell a little on the financial uh, frauds. So OTP scams, you all know, that you know, the banks say that never, never share OTP with anybody. Okay, they always tell you. So OTP is personally is for you and don't share it with uh, anybody. KYC scams, no bank will or no uh, you know organization will tell you to do KYC like that. You have to go on their official website after checking the URL, HTTPS, padlock, and otherwise the best is to go across to the bank. It's a good exercise. And uh, uh, why not do it? Why not think that, okay, let me have the comfort of the house. You have the comfort of the house and you can do financial transactions. But then there is a risk to it. Now, there are those credit and debit card uh, 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 skimming machines. Okay. When we go to ATM, uh, there are skimming machines uh, uh, which are there, the cameras on top. And then when you where you insert the card, you have to check that the thing which is where you insert the card, just pull it out. Sometimes there are, there is a layer on top of this and there is a camera inside. So whenever you go to ATM, before inserting your card, try to you know uh, 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 shake a little gently that uh, thing where you insert your card because if there is an added uh, attachment to it, it will come out. So this is the ATM fraud. Then the net banking frauds are there and those uh, banks have uh, safety uh, uh, precautions in place, but a lot of us don't follow those precautions. Our passwords may not be um, very strong or more when we are doing net banking, we are very careless. We are doing from public Wi-Fi. Uh, we don't log out. We keep it open. So we have to take care of the net banking. And I would say that try to do banking physically. And if you're told you're doing net banking, again, Check the URL of that bank. Have a strong password. Have multi-factor authentication. Okay. And use virtual keyboard for the passwords. I know virtual keyboard is a little uh, uncomfortable. But if you, uh, uh, you know, type your password, then the keys, the, those keys which you press can be captured. And log out. Very important. By, cl by clicking on cross on the right-hand side, uh, you know, it's like this, that uh, we are at home. And then uh, uh, we want to sleep at night. So I just shut the door and I say that I'm safe. No, we when we sleep at night, we make sure all the doors and windows are shut. So similarly with your net banking. Then there is this uh, uh, ransomware uh, issue where somebody has access to your data or they may do uh, identity theft or impersonation. And they say that give us this much of money. Only then we will change the password of your account. Ransomware happens a lot in educational institutes where the student data is uh, uh, because of the weak password or you know carelessness of somebody. Then what happens is that they they uh, uh, hack into your system and they lock up your data and they ask for ransom. It has happened with lot many uh, institutions across the world. Then there are phishing, wishing, and uh, uh, smishing scams. I'll talk of them, and there are deep fake frauds. So I'll quickly say phishing is basically the calls that you come to. Phishing is a cyber crime in which some you are contacted by an email or telephone by somebody who poses as I'm from bank or I'm from legitimate institutions, and they ask for uh, uh, you know your sensitive information. So phishing is like you know they give you a bait. That, uh, uh, you know, if uh, the other example is they'll give you a bait uh, promising you are, free, you are a senior citizen or whatever, you're promising you a free holiday and uh, uh, you have to fill up this form and deposit one rupee in a bank. And then, you know, this is the holiday is the bait and they catch the fish. 
So uh, uh, phishing, uh, smishing is when it happens through SMS. Phishing is when it happens through phone. Okay. And bishing is when it happens through the voice call. So I'm giving you a few examples. So this is very, very true. This was in news. Delhi man was duped of 50 lakhs after receiving a missed call. So basically somebody uh, got a new SIM card issued against the registered mobile number because they got to know all the details of that person. And they went to the, uh, 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 let's say, uh, telephone service provider shop and uh, they posed at that person. They had his photograph, they had his personal details and everything and said, my SIM is lost, issue us a new SIM. So they took the SIM and this other person has no idea. And then they started to use the SIM of that person and lock that person out. And then because the that person's uh, uh, phone had all the details, so 50 lakhs were uh, taken from his account. So quickly, I'll. Uh, uh, these days, the new scam is it happened with uh, my friend last week. So uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, he got a phone call uh, from somebody, uh, you know, from his friend, a video call from his friend. Uh, now uh, that friend was asking him from the money. Uh, that uh, uh, I'm his friend was staying in the US and he said that my sister is to undergo uh, surgery and can you transfer uh, uh, 75,000 rupees right now to uh, my, this account number which I'm sharing now what happens is that that uh, this friend of ours hadn't met this uh, US uh, friend for a long time and when he saw him all emotions and all that he says of course I will send you and he sent him 75,000 he did not check uh, uh, that the number was same or different. He did not check anything and he sent the money. Now, what happened and how, how did that uh, the, the hackers have that uh, the uh, <clears throat> photograph of the friend and moving his lips and sounding like the friend? It is by the uh, uh, it is by the deep fake videos generated by uh, artificial intelligence. And scammers use this technology to target victims by impersonating close friends or family. So this case happened with my friend's husband just about last week. And there is this on 9 June, a Kerala man lost 40,000 to an artificial intelligence based scam when someone who claimed to be former colleague called him and asked for money to help a relative in the hospital. Same thing happened with the, uh, my friend. So uh, this is AI has made our life very, very easy. And I know a lot of you must be using chat GPT. Uh, you know, but then this, uh, like I said, technology brings opportunities, possibilities, but also a uh, lot of complications in our life. Okay, it is up to us how to deal with those complications, right? So next time you receive a message, or even if you receive an audio call or a video call uh, with somebody claiming to be uh, uh, your friend and asking for money, uh, you know, you say, okay, fine. And then you recheck through other sources. Like, for example, you recheck that does this number match with your friend's number? Or you call your friend and ask him or her, did you really call me? Reach, uh, verify, re-verify, do it a number of times. Don't take things at the face value because technology has made the impossible also uh, possible in a good way, but in a bad way as well. So, uh, friends, you have to be very, very alert. Your safety is in uh, your hands. Uh, never click on unknown uh, uh, links. Do not download free or pirated software. You may be saving money, uh, maybe it's five, seven hundred rupees or five, seven thousand, but uh, your life can get complicated and OTP, KYC not to be shared and URL of the bank website to be rechecked, strong passwords, two-factor authentication, and recheck privacy settings. I thought I'll leave you with those. Uh, verify, block unwanted callers, uh, mark suspicious mails as spams like that university email, log out of net banking window, and uh, uh, do not use public Wi-Fi, and think before you post, as it may affect your reputation, your well-being, your happiness, and everything. So you must prevent, prepare, and protect. It is very, very important. OK, this is just what I'm sharing is as a recap of what I have told you. OK, and God forbid anything happens with you or with your friends, 
you can report if somebody is being harassed or bullied, then there is social reporting, reporting to the uh, counselor, reporting to the school authorities. Then there is platform reporting. Let's say somebody has impersonated as you and locked you out of your social media profile. Uh, then you can also report, but you have to have evidence. You can report on the platform. And then there is legal and formal reporting for any frauds, etc. So the national uh, uh, cybercrime cell is www.cybercrime.gov.in. You can report over there. It's a very, very efficient uh, reporting, uh, cybercrime reporting portal by the government of India. Or you can call at 1930. And uh, you can report, they will, you, you can put your complaint, you, and it's, it's a very user-friendly uh, portal, okay? You can even track your complaints. And uh, uh, wherever you're working, you are working in a school, a college, uh, just put up this poster of, uh, uh, you know, reporting and the formal reports where to, there are cyber safety cells in districts, you can uh, go to the cyber safety cells. And if there is something uh, with small children, POXO, child line help box is there. And uh, uh, Cyber Peace, the organization where I am a consultant, has their helpline. The helpline number is 957-5066. We, uh, anybody who files a complaint with us, we help them, we uh, connect them with the right authorities and help them to solve the uh, issue. So friends, we are living in digital age. We are living in information age. Uh, we have to travel on this highway. Otherwise, we will be left behind. Okay. Uh, so, uh, like you travel, when you travel on the highway in the real world, you follow the rules, you follow the uh, uh, lanes, you follow the uh, speed limits and other things. Okay. And you go in a sturdy vehicle. So similarly, you apply the same precautions in your real life, travel safely and smartly on this information superhighway along with your family, along with your friends, and use the potential of technology for your growth and the growth of the people who are connected with you. So uh, that's all from me today. And uh, uh, I will take uh, questions now for next 10 minutes. Uh, Ma'am, we have a question in the chat box. What are the softwares to detect cyber crimes? So there are softwares for the viruses, etc. to detect. Uh, there are those antivirus uh, uh, softwares which can detect the vi virus. But crime as such is done by humans. So there are no softwares as such for them. But definitely you can have an antivirus and then any virus which is coming in your, and the latest and the original antivirus. Okay, uh, ma'am, we will keep the, can you do one thing? Can you unmute everybody and they can ask questions quickly? They can raise their hands and then we can uh, uh, ask questions. Yes, ma'am, they can ask the questions uh, in the chat box. Even otherwise, uh, can you just unmute everybody and then uh, they can raise uh, hands. And... Okay, ma'am. Because it'll be nice. Otherwise, you know, the time is limited and I want, uh, you know, the uh, people to... Uh, Mr. Reddy, Mr. A.N. Reddy. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. 